All right, Joyce Droob here, Bike Man Performance. Technical Tuesday segment on how to read a dyno graph. And, and uh, we're just gonna go over some basic dyno graphs uh, with torque and horsepower on them. And we're gonna explain what these uh, different numbers here, I don't think you can see the cursor, it's right there. Uh, so this would be your, your torque curve on this graph. And you can see the RPM goes across the bottom of the screen here. So this is, you know, 67.50. This is where the dyno run would have started loading the motor. And it goes up to about 8600, uh, which is the, where the dyno run was ended. On the left side here, going up and down, you'll see horsepower, uh, this particular one, and torque. Uh, it goes from uh, just under 100 up to 180. Uh, this particular engine is our Axis Stage 3 kit. And you can see that the column of numbers over here on the left uh, correspond with the plots on the graph. So let's first understand what torque is. Uh, torque is this lower uh, one here, and if you're above 5250, uh, whatever your horsepower number is, your torque is going to be less than that. Otherwise, it's not mathematically correct. Uh, the torque is what gives you the ability to turn something. So if you have a lever, uh, one foot out on that lever, if you have 100 foot pounds, uh, that's how much torque you're putting on something. So it's how, many, uh, how much pressure you can put out at a given distance on a lever. And now when you multiply that times RPM, you can see even though the torque's falling off right here, your horsepower is still going up because as you go higher RPM, less torque will make more energy possible. So the torque is the amount of potential energy. Horsepower is the ability to turn that torque into movement. So when you're loading an engine on any CVT system, you want to get up uh, to your peak torque very quickly. And I'll show you on uh, a four-stroke engine, the torque curve is, is quite a bit different. Uh, this is a two-stroke engine, so, uh, but the same formula and, and game plan works on all of them. You want to get to your peak torque uh, very rapidly. And then, like you can see the peak torque here, we'll look over on the left, is actually at 8200. And we'll look down, uh, peak horsepower is at 8500. So if we're setting up the clutching on this one, we would want to get that RPM up to that 8200 very quickly and then once we're at the 8200 then we can take advantage of that horsepower and the RPM that it's capable of and slowly uh, carry that RPM out to the to the peak horsepower. So on this particular engine we get up to 8250 really fast with our clutching and let it rev out, rev out to 8500. Let's look at another graph. Uh, so this is a stage build up for a, a bike man Polaris axis. Uh, we can see the, the green here is the stock torque curve and you know each layer of build going up from there. So the, the peak torque comes up, uh, you know you're at about 8100 on the stock pipe and 8200 uh, is your peak horsepower so you'd come up to 8100 very quick and rev out to uh, 8200 which is you know what you would see would work best in the field too. Uh, now once you add the pipe and uh, fuel controller uh, which we use a, actually full reflash on this model uh, you can see that uh, the the graphs drastically change and the peak uh, torque now is moved up to 8200 and the peak horsepower is out at like 8300 and once you go to our stage 3 kit which is uh, pipe head durability kit uh, the peak torque now is at 8300 and it revs out way to 8500 so on our stage 3 kit inherently you would go, get up to that 8200 very quickly and then let, let your clutching uh, rev out on the big end uh, to 8,500. This is uh, comparing a, a 
stock Skidoo 850 with our 911 kit. And what's crazy on this one is uh, your peak torque on a stock 850 versus the minimum torque on a 911, you could be anywhere in the RPM range and you would be making more torque than the peak torque of a 850. And so that makes the, the clutching really forgiving and uh, we have a real wide uh, RPM band where we can hit. Uh, since the peak torque comes up so fast, it's making 122, 123 horse, or 123 foot pounds of torque. Uh, way down at 7300 and we're peaking off at uh, maybe 126. This is uh, a, a setup that would really, about any clutching you throw at it uh, will work. Now if you're getting up to your uh, peak RPM uh, for horsepower, it's gonna pull higher on the big end, but this whole package is gonna make considerably amount of more uh, pull and feel of power versus uh, the stock setup. So now this is a uh, uh, let's see what this is a 900 razor uh, wheel dyno. So a wheel dyno is measuring power after everything goes out the back and on a Mustang dyno you can see uh, the the, the top run one will always be the lightest color and as it gets darker that's your run three and so the top the lighter run is your first run and as they get darker uh, it's changing it so you can see that this is measured versus time from a dead stop and how much power it's making uh, out the rear wheels so this one looks like it peaks out about uh, 6900 you'll notice uh, wheel dynos get a little bit more uh, peaks and valleys to them which uh, you'd use a, a smoothing function to to smooth that out but it's just uh, a normal thing with a, a inertia slash uh, eddy current dyno so that's a, a brief uh, display of how to read a dyno chart and how to possibly use it to help you clutch your uh, machine. So we'll be uh, signing off. Well, we can grab a, a different one here. All right, this is a Ranger 900 uh, in stock form. You can see we're getting about 68 horse here. And uh, since the Ranger 900 limits the throttle plate, oh, let's not use this one. So let's look at this is a four stroke so let's look at what the torque is doing on a four stroke so this is why the clutching on a, on a four stroke would be uh, quite a bit different than a two stroke you'll see that they make lots of torque and then just slowly lose that torque as the RPM goes up but they're losing at a rate where a lot of times if on the horsepower over here uh, since we have the torque over on this side on this one and the horsepower over on this side uh, we can kind of view them separately because they're not overlaid. The torque on a four stroke just it, it, it tends to just keep running out and, and uh, they make such 
a load of torque down low that even though it's still coming up through this zone, we can get away with loading it fairly heavy and, uh, and still take advantage of that because we're at the uh, peak torque. But you can see like uh, this is uh, one where we're adding cams. So uh, level two would be uh, tune and exhaust, that's our red one. And then the blue would be the addition of cams. And you can see it doesn't make a whole lot more torque, but it doesn't fade off as fast. And when you compare that on the horsepower graph, you can really see that horsepower value go up from that. So the ability to carry the RPM really made our horsepower jump up and it's going to really make the ability to move that machine uh, efficiently go way up and we can actually compare this black line the black line was gaining a big bore and the the blue line was gaining cams so the big bore really increased the torque so it but then it, since we can't get that air volume that we're getting in the motor out of it the the torque starts falling off and inherently the horsepower flattens out where this one even though it never makes the same torque as the big bore does since it can carry the rpm out further you end up making more horsepower and this value right here is going to make this package it won't feel as strong right when you step on it but in the long run, it's going to be faster because it makes more power. So this is a little, you know, different than the two-stroke world. But uh, you know, everything's got its own characteristics, and you got to take advantage of uh, uh, each uh, motor's torque curve and horsepower curve, and and use that uh, to the best of your ability, and you'll end up with the fastest product possible.